And so during this time, as we're going through specific types of wood, our sermon series and our Wednesday night Bible studies are going to complementing are going to be complementing each other. And we have Sam, who's got a background in forestry, who's going to talk a little bit about olive wood tonight, uh, because we're going to be talking a lot about uh, olive wood and olive harvest. So I'm going to invite Sam uh, up for a brief little discussion about our selected wood for the evening. Come on up, Sam. Hello, everybody. As uh, Mike mentioned, uh, tonight's uh, tree is the olive. Uh, it's called Olea europea. Uh, it's in the Oleaceae family, uh, and it's na native to the Mediterranean basin. And the Mediterranean basin stretches from Portugal all the way over to the Levant region, which includes Israel on the eastern side of the Mediterranean. Uh, it's also found in the Arabian Peninsula as far east as China. The olive tree is related to lilacs, uh, which is a popular garden bush or tree. Also jasmine, which is a, a flowering vine that's found locally. Uh, Forsythia is a popular plant that's blooming right now in these very pretty yellow blooms. And true ash trees, uh, which are native to North America. And uh, ash trees are things that they make for you sports fans, that they make baseball bats and hockey sticks out of. The leaves of olive are evergreen. They have kind of a, a waxy coloring or a, a lot waxy covering. And um, so that helps them to be able to preserve the water and, and so that it, it, it's not taken away by the, the heat of the areas that they live. The height reaches around 25 to 50 feet. It's kind of hard to determine the diameter of these trees. The, the trunks tend to be kind of twisted and gnarled and they're not really known for, for, uh, for their trunk so much as for what you do with, with the fruit and, and the products that come from the tree. Crown spread is around 30 feet. Um, the age, uh, this is a pretty old tree. There are several individuals that are in the uh, thousand plus years old. Uh, the oldest estimate of a tree, and, and this is pretty much on, on local legend, but the oldest estimate is around 4,000 years for, a, for an olive tree. They like warm temperatures. They prefer basic soils, so if you're familiar with the pH scale, you're probably about a five and a half to an eight, eight and a half. So they like something probably more on the basic side. They don't like wet areas, so you're not going to find them in the swamp. You're going to find them more in a well-drained soil in the full sun. Olive tree products. Uh, the main thing is the olive. Um, it's it's the fruit of the tree. They Basically, for all you olive lovers out there, um, they, they come in the green olive or, or the black olive. The green ones are unripe and the black ones are ripe. They contain a, a, a bitter compound called oleuropium, and that needs to be cured. Uh, they treat it with lye, and then they soak it in a, in a salt brine and ferment it, and uh, that eventually will get this bitter compound out of it so that it's edible. Uh, the bitter compounds tend to naturally diminish as the olive ripens. Olive wood uh, is valued for its durability, its color, its high burning temperatures, and its interesting grain patterns. Now some of the things that are made from olive wood are, are something such as, as this box. Uh, you, don't, you don't tend to make big pieces of furniture. But one thing that a lot of people tend to make, and I need to get all this closer to the camera here so you can see this grain pattern, um, you can see that it is, this has a, a very interesting grain pattern of multi different kinds of, of colors in it. But you can see that this is a manger scene. And that's a very popular thing. And if you notice, there were some words on the bottom of this, that this, this is actually made in Bethlehem. So it's a, it's a very popular wood for uh, making religious articles out of. And finally, the probably one of the most important things to the ancient peoples around the Mediterranean was the oil that they could get from, from olive trees. Um, they make this from ripe olives. They, the process is that they, they grind the olive into a paste. Then it undergoes a process called malaxation. And that's where they add water to the paste and then they stir it. And this causes the molecules of oil that are naturally found in the olive to start to clump together. And then the paste that has gone through this malaxation process is pressed, uh, 
pressure is put on it to either squeeze out the liquid or it's spun in a centrifuge and that forces the liquid out. And so then you have the oil and the water um, that comes away from the paste and you have to separate the oil from the water and that's what you're left with is good old olive oil. Uh, olive oil is clean, it's used in skin care. Uh, it's used in uh, as a base to making soap. Uh, it, it was probably the main oil that they would use for oil burning lamps around the Mediterranean uh, in that day. Uh, something that is referenced quite a bit in the Bible. And probably one of the more important things that the oil was used for was for religious anointing. Uh, it, was, it was the oil that was used to anoint King David and the other kings of uh, Israel. And now I'll go ahead and, and turn it over to Kelly. Thank you so much, Sam. So the olive tree tonight, for that is our next stop on our wooden journey through Lent, is olive tree, and this has been such a great background introduction to the olive tree. The olive tree has so many uses and so many symbols in scripture, and particularly tonight, we're going to look at the book of Romans and the symbol of the olive tree in the book of Romans, because it is such a fitting lesson for all of us in the season of Lent, and it is a fitting lesson for all of us in this particular season where we find ourselves. So the book of Romans, Paul, the Apostle Paul, was the author of the book of Romans. And the funny thing is, he wrote this book having never actually read what he was writing to. It's one of the most long and theologically deep books. But he was saying the whole time how much he longed to go and meet them. So he's writing this long theological book to the church in Rome and hadn't yet had a chance to actually meet each one who was there. And in a few years, he would get a chance to visit them and he would actually spend a couple of years in Rome. He would spend a couple of years in Rome under house arrest, awaiting an uncertain future. So that may sound a little familiar to a lot of us these days, that we're home quite a bit and we're looking to a bit of an uncertain future. But Paul's message, Paul's message to the church of God then, and to the church of God now, is a message of unity. Paul himself was the Jew of Jews, but he was called to be an apostle to the Gentiles. You know, the Jews looked at the world as there were the Jews, and there was everybody else, all the rest of us. And Paul's call in our scripture tonight is for both groups to be unified in the family tree of God. Our scriptures tonight are from the book of Romans. We're going to look at chapter 11, verses 17 to 18, talking about the tree of the family of God. This is the word of the Lord to us tonight. If some of the branches, he's talking about the olive tree, if some of the branches have been broken off, and you, the people of God, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. Do not boast over those branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. Let's pray as we begin. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the beautiful picture of the olive tree. May this olive tree remind us about the unity of the people of God and how that unity is plugged into the power and presence of who you are as the root of all things. We pray these things in your most powerful name. Amen. So Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. That was his particular call. Even though, of course, he'd been very much raised a Jew, he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, he called himself. And Peter, many of us remember Peter as one of the disciples, Peter had been the apostle to the Jews. He was specifically called to bring the message of Christ to the Jews. But it's interesting that both men ended up at the end of their lives in Rome. And how Rome, this physical place, became the physical place of unity between the apostle of the Jews and the apostle of the Gentiles, both ending their lives there. And we remember that Paul's future, like many writers of the New Testament, it was an uncertain future. It was a time of persecution. 
It was a time of animosity to the gospel. They never know what was going to happen in the next moment. But yet the gospel was going forth with power. If you think about how powerfully the gospel is going forth digitally now, on all of the different mediums, the gospel was going back forth then simply by the physical presence of missionaries going out and these letters going out to the churches. And the gospel was going forth with power. Earlier in that letter to the Romans, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. God's call was to be for all people. But Jesus came as a Jew. He came first to the Jews because God is a faithful God. He wasn't going to abandon his people. He was going to come to them first. But then he calls someone like Paul to preach to the rest of us, to get him outside of his comfort zone. And a lot of us feel a bit outside of our comfort zone now. But this passage is a reminder that we are part of the family tree of God. The Gentiles were called a wild olive shoot, this little branch that came out of a stump. And usually what they would do with wild olive shoots is they would take that wild shoot and they would just plant a whole new tree. But God has a different picture of that. He says, no, no, we're not planting a whole new tree among the Gentiles. We are grafting in. We are combining this olive shoot into the very tree, the very family of God. This is going to be one tree in the family of God. Paul says in his letter to the Galatians, there is no longer any Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. You are all one in Jesus Christ. So the olive tree is this picture of unity, it's a picture of strength, it's a picture of salvation. In the story of Noah, you know, Sam shared with us about wood that is water resistant in our first week of the study. In the story of Noah, what Noah sends out to see if it's time to get off the ark, he sends out a dove, and the dove brings back eventually a branch from an olive tree. Because an olive tree is a very hardy tree. So he knew at that point that the waters had receded enough that a branch was now possible to grow. So this picture of the olive tree in the book of Romans is a picture of unity among the people. We are all part of that same tree. It is also a picture of God's salvation to us. And that God's family, God's people, we thrive and we go forth with power, especially during times of difficulty and uncertainty. The way a olive tree is harvested is a very unusual way. They don't pick the olives one by one. They place a tarp under the tree and they shake the tree until the olives fall and the harvest is collected. So what happens when our spiritual trees are shaken to the spiritual harvest that God has for the family of God and the tree of God right here now. Hi, everybody. Sorry, we were sanitizing my mic there. I love Sam, but we're trying to maintain our social distancing a little bit. Uh, well, Kelly was talking about the harvesting there, and after this video, uh, if you guys want to go online, you can Google it. And I watched some videos. They have these really neat machines, and they're really strong, and they use little clamps, at least in the video I saw. And they grab a hold of the olive, and they, they just vigorously shake it with tarps underneath. And uh, it's kind of beautiful when God shakes things up in a way, when everything he's doing uh, to us, when it comes together to make things beautiful. I mean, we are in a difficult time, right? We are in a time where we can feel a little bit like the olive uh, tree, right? We, and I think that's a good analogy for us. I mean, we are in a time of being shaken up, right? God is in the midst of shaking things up. I mean, we are, uh, I was talking with some pastor friends of mine and I said, you know, do you guys have any best practices? And they said, well, the last, Time that we dealt with this was 1918. So if you know any pastors who pastored in 1918, you know you should touch base with them. It's a it's an unusual time. We don't know kind of what to expect. We are being shaken up 
And just like uh, when you shake and you harvest an olive tree, you, you harvest all that good fruit. That's really what God's going to be doing with us. He's going to be taking this time of shaking, and there's going to be a lot of good fruit that's going to come out of it. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's, there's, this is a rough time, and I'm not minimizing uh, the suffering and the pain and the loss, and we're going to have some time praying uh, together about that. Uh, but God can do good things even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of uh, really tragic situations. Um, olives provided physical food. Uh, they, as Sam mentioned, they provided spiritual food. They were used for the oil that would be used to anoint King David. It was a, used to anoint uh, the men who were in service to the temple. This was God's way of setting apart his leadership. And we want to pray that God would use us in the same way, that as we are fruit, as we are olive fruit, uh, that we would be physical and spiritual sustenance to the world. One of Jesus' favorite places to pray was the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane. On his final night on earth, he prayed for the unity of the people of God, especially prayed for unity of people who would come to know uh, Jesus Christ through them. And he was talking specifically about us. So he's praying to his heavenly father about the apostles, and he was saying, you know, I pray that uh, especially that they would be one who hear that message, you and me, that we would be one. Um, so uh, as God shakes things up in our lives right now, as things don't feel comfortable, uh, remember that God, God has prepared us in every way for He has planted the, 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 the tree of the family of God, so, and we're uh, nourished with the root of God's power and peace. And we're called to spiritual healing. We're called to be hope and light, spiritual nourishment, spiritual encouragement, and peace out in the world. You know, I want you to look at this time in a few years and look back and see, Gosh, God did some amazing things uh, in my life. So go out and be that spiritual fruit. Even if you can't physically go out, you know, reach out to somebody, uh, talk to them, pray with them. I don't know about you. I've been connecting with a lot of people that I haven't touched base with in a long time, and I hope you use that opportunity, too, to be spiritual fruit. Uh, Kelly, you want to come back up? And uh, we're going to now deal, go into a time of uh, prayer. And Stacy and Brenton, we have the, the beautiful Stacy and the wonderful Brenton. Right here, if you guys could turn around and say hi to the cameras. So they're going to be uh, responding if you guys have specific prayer requests, and we're going to be taking time to pray together. Uh, so if there's something specific or even just something generic where you just have a friend of a friend who needs prayers, we'll, we'll pray for that. Um, and again, uh, please do be thinking about joining us uh, at our Wednesday at Word, Word, the Word at 1, uh, on, at 1 p.m., and then at our next Wednesday night and our upcoming uh, Sunday worship service. Uh, any prayer requests, you guys? Um, the first one that we received was for Patty Carlson for the investigatory issues. Okay. Lord, we lift up Patty to you, and God, we pray that you would ease the pressure, that you would ease the difficulty that she is having breathing. Lord, we just, we just pray that you would just move through each one of these airways, and Lord, that you would just clear them out, and especially that you would just anoint her with your peace, that as she breathes more easily, she is breathing in your peace and breathing out your grace. So we pray over Patty in Jesus' name. Amen. Perfect. We have another prayer request. Um, continue prayers for those on the front line during this pandemic. Um, prayers for the relief from the anxiety that's coming with the new normal of how we're living. And please also pray for Dick Graham and Elizabeth Wagner. Sure. Okay. okay, so the prayer requests were for Dick Graham and Elizabeth Wagner. Uh, we did pray for them. Actually, I, I just uh, chatted with Dick yesterday or day before, and we sound, well, I don't know what all I can share, but keep them in your prayers, but we're getting some good movement there. Yeah. And then for all of our frontline responders, and just for the general sense of anxiety, and just a long way to start when you can. Uh, Lord God, we just do lift up our uh, frontline responders to you, Lord. We are so thankful for men and women who uh, voluntarily go out there uh, each day and uh, care for us, whether it's uh, physically as firefighters and police officers, whether it is uh, medically um, as uh, doctors and nurses. Um, for all of our uh, people in leadership, God, we pray for wisdom and discernment. Uh, for all those suffering from anxiety and for stress, God, we just pray that uh, we could just take a deep breath and just find our peace in you. We know that uh, you have peace that passes all understanding, and we just want to uh, put all of our concerns, all of our worries, all of our fears, anxieties about money, about the future, about uh, our time, uh, how to spend our energy, about our loved ones. Lord, we just uh, want to put them in your hands. We, Lord, we don't know 
uh, what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. We just want to lift up all of these burdens to you. And Lord, we lift up Elizabeth to you. Just pray for continued healing for her, uh, protection from further difficulties and infections. Lord, we pray for Dick. Um, and Lord, just pray that as he moves into this next phase of treatment, that Lord, uh, you would give him just a quick recovery, um, that you would just surround him, his whole family, with a real peace knowing that you are in this. And Lord, that you would just keep the spirits up of all those who are in the hospital, those who are awaiting procedures who may not even be able to have those procedures now. God, we just pray that you would sustain them until the time comes when the hospitals may operate in a more day-to-day -day way. And so we pray for that day to come as quickly, God. And we pray for your hand in just holding back this virus, that Lord, you would uh, just work a divine intervention in holding back the spread and in the recovery of many who are sick. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Uh, Don, like that uh, prayer for her daughter, Olivia. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Don would like to pray for Olivia. Yeah, well, let me pray. Go for it. Uh, Lord God, we do just lift up uh, Don and Olivia and uh, baby Brantley, God, and the entire Levering family. Uh, Lord, we just pray for uh, peace that passes all understanding. We just pray for um, just relief of chest pain, uh, discomfort, um, that these uh, symptoms would just uh, subside uh, supernaturally and divinely uh, in your name, Jesus. Uh, we just pray for a full and complete recovery uh, for Olivia. Um, we pray protection over the entire family mm -hmm. uh, and over Martin and Donna as they're uh, caring for sweet baby Brantley. We just pray for protection over them. We just thank you for that family. I just pray for a special anointing of uh, protection and of health and a blessing over that family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, perfect. I actually have one from one of the youth. Oh, okay. um, you got one from one of the youth? Oh, yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. Um, Brian says his grandmother's in a nursing home and she's not allowed to leave her home. So let's just pray that she's able to get some fresh air soon. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Lord, we lift up Brian's grandmother to you. Lord, we lift up all those who are in care facilities and nursing homes, but Lord, this just may feel even more isolating and like they're just further and further away from people and from the outside. And God, we just pray that you would just bring to her a special sign of your presence with her, that she just may be able to get outside and smell the nature and fresh air that you've created. And Lord, that she would just be with all of her caregivers and all of those, Lord, who are giving care to those um, in these various rest homes and recovery homes. Lord, they would have a special touch of your presence, that as they enter each room, they may bring the fragrance of your Holy Spirit, and that they may bring a real peace in your presence, that you are there with each one. And we just lift these things up in your name. Amen. We have a prayer request for Norma Steinmetz, because she's in isolation. She's just living alone in isolation. She's really anxious. So, Norma Steinmetz. So, so a prayer request for Norma Steinmetz. Who's living in isolation and feeling uh, pretty anxious about that? And yeah, we, that's a, sure. I'm sure that she speaks for a lot of people. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we do just lift Norma up to you uh, and just pray for um, a complete cessation of her anxiety. Mm -hmm. And we just pray that you give her uh, divine and supernatural peace. Lord, that you give all of us peace uh, during challenging, difficult times. Uh, that we would just turn and find our comfort and our rest in you, Jesus, and you alone. We we have one for the Burfoot household. They are on a 14-day quarantine, so um, just prayers for their home. Okay, so prayers for the Burfoot house that they're on a 14-day quarantine. Lord, we lift up the Burfoot house to you, and Lord, all the homes that um, house people who are in times of distress or difficulty. And Lord, we just pray for a special protection upon them against any spread of the virus there, that you would strengthen each body, heart, and mind. And Lord, that this time may be a time of real fellowship and connection between each one, that they may be patient and gracious with one another, and Lord, that out of this quarantine there would be no further cases, and Lord, that you would protect them and keep them in every way. Amen. I have a prayer request from Samuel Springer for high school seniors who are unsure about schoolwork preparation. Oh, yeah, yeah. so yeah, this is from Samuel seniors. Springer for uh, high, all the high school seniors out there who are concerned about graduation and all those plans, future plans, homework, yes. all that kind of stressful time. You know what I'm saying? Lord, we lift up our high school seniors to you, or those who are coming to the end of this great journey, um, but yet, Lord, it just sort of has ended with a whimper and it's such a disappointment to many and to their families and friends. And God, we pray that in each heart and mind, they would know 
how much they are loved by you and approved by you, and that, Lord, they are celebrated by you in every way. And God, we pray uh, that even as the summer goes on, there may be celebration. Lord, we look forward to a time of rejoicing and of being able to celebrate the things that have been on hold for a little while. Lord, we pray that all of the schoolwork necessary to complete it will be done, that, Lord, you would work with the schools and give them wisdom in how to complete all the work for seniors and all the different grade levels, that as each child goes into the summer, they can just rest assured that in the fall there might be a new day, and, Lord, a day that moves them forward and helps them look back with real gratitude on the teachers they've had this year. Thank you for teachers and all those who work with children. And, Lord, that they will look towards the new year with great hope and that they will look at this time and know that you are in it. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Uh, we have one from Don Bell. She asks that we just pray for those who are grieving. Mm, yeah. From Don uh, Bell, those who are grieving. Yeah, well, I'm going to pray. Well, uh, Lord, we do just lift up the Bell family to you. Um, uh, we just pray for comfort uh, and for peace. Um, and we pray for all those who are grieving. Uh, uh, there's a lot of loss uh, going on right now. And we just ask you uh, to provide your comfort and your peace to all those uh, who've lost loved ones uh, recently. Lord, we think of the, the Bridge Light family and the loss of their uh, Lord, there's just a lot of loss going on right now. So we just lift up. Uh, everybody who has lost a loved one, we pray for your peace on them and your protection. In Jesus' name, amen. I think we had um, also a prayer request for extroverts that are struggling with being at home. Oh my gosh, can I, okay, can I pray for this one? Yes, that's Okay, right. so the prayer request, I'm trying not to scratch my face. You know, you're not supposed to touch your face, but it's itchy right now. Uh, the prayer was for extroverts who are really struggling uh, with being at home, and I, I just resonate with that. That really resonates with my soul. It's been hard. I miss you guys. We, we miss you guys yes. a lot. Um, it's tough to just have to even be six feet away from people and not give the hugs that you want or the pats on the back. You know, we, we get it. Uh, yeah, let's pray. Uh, Lord God, um, for everybody who's extroverted, everybody whose love languages is uh, interaction and communication and um, words of affirmation and uh, physical touch, God, we just pray um, for comfort right now, God. It is just a difficult and a stressful time. Um, it's compounded the anxiety and the worry of not knowing what the day holds uh, and what the, the months and the weeks ahead hold. It's compounded by not being able to just reach out and touch someone, God. Uh, so just please uh, bring people to our minds that we can reach out to, at least electronically, whether it's through a phone call or a text or an email. Um, or a message on Facebook, uh, God, and um, thank you for giving us this chance to remember how important uh, connection and community is, Lord, and may we not uh, squander these lessons that we're learning, and may we just really uh, be people that are more rooted and more connected uh, and more drawn together in community going forward uh, because of this. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. We have one from Judy that says, please pray for our pastors that are under tremendous pressures with the uncertainty with Easter coming and unable to physically care for the congregation. Okay. So, so prayer for pastors, all church leadership. Um, we know all of our you know, deacons and all those who visit, all those who are used to physically interacting with people, uh, not being able to do that pastorally you know, in that way, not going to hospitals in the same way. Um, just pray that God would give us all real strength and wisdom. Yeah. Let's pray. Lord, we lift up our churches to you. God, we're so thankful for the leadership of churches, uh, pastors, teachers, staff, uh, Sunday school teachers, Lord, all those who work in administration, those who work with youth and children, and Lord, those who uh, work with pastoral care and visitation, and Lord, the many ways that so many congregations connect with one another. And Lord, we know that not being able to physically interact in those ways is a challenge. And Lord, just the new form of interacting digitally, what services look like, and how does it look like going forward? How long will this be? Lord, there's all these questions. And Lord, we know that in the Psalms, David asked that question a lot. How long, oh Lord, how long? But Lord, we want to say tonight that we trust in you. We put our faith in you. Um, but Lord, we just want to ask for your patience and that we just put our hand in yours and we don't ask how long, Lord, we say, what would you have us do with the time? And Lord, for each of us, um, that would be the theme of our lives. What would you have us do with the time that you have given us day by day, moment by moment? So we pray, God, for your wisdom, your 
patience, your energy, and your strength for all those who are serving God's people in every way. Amen. Uh, we have a prayer request from Jared Horton um, for prayers for those that are hurting from this coronavirus. Mm. So, so a prayer request from Joan for those who are dealing with disappointments. Yeah, all right, let's pray. Uh, Lord God, it is a disappointing uh, time. God, there are so many things, whether it's birthdays or graduations or uh, anniversaries or parties, uh, events that, that we're missing, God, uh, concerts, fun things. Lord, uh, there's a sense of disappointment, um, just uh, sadness at what's going on. But I just pray for all those uh, who are uh, grieving or sad uh, right now, um, God, who feel a sense of loss, just comfort them uh, and give them your peace. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Okay, we have one from Linda. Mm -hmm. Prayers for all the people with compromised immune systems and elderly who are more susceptible. Success, susceptible. Mm -hmm. And I still did not get it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brenton is success. The pause here is that Brenton is trying to say the word susceptible, <laughs> and he keeps saying susceptible. Yeah. So we're gonna pray for everyone who's susceptible, <laughs> and also <laughs> people who are susceptible to, to upper respiratory infections. Yes. Embarrassing. Um, to infections, um, and that they just carry safely through the crisis. Yeah, for all of our immunocompromised friends and family. Lord, we lift up those um, whose bodies do not fight infection as well as others. God, we're so thankful for the powerful way that you have made us, and so thankful for the many ways you have made us to fight the things of this world. But Lord, this is a new thing, and especially for those uh, who already have difficulty fighting. God, we pray that you would even more powerfully fight on their behalf and for them. Lord, we pray for those who are immunocompromised through immune diseases. And Lord, we pray for those who are compromised through cancer and cancer treatments. Lord, those who are elderly, Lord, we're so thankful for the wisdom of our elderly populations and Lord, the many years that they have given to the service and knowledge of you. We pray that you would preserve them. God, we pray for all of these, these things that have been put into place, like social distancing and um, shutting things down and staying at home and the distance that Lord this distance would be successful in really protecting the vulnerable populations and that Lord that would be a successful movement uh, very quickly to make sure those populations are not affected um, in the powerful way that we've seen it affected in other areas and we just pray God we just to move and protect in every way and we pray these things in your name Amen. Um, there's actually some comments just about canceled weddings and there have actually been several in our congregation so maybe yeah. we can yes. just pray for those that are trying yeah. to have canceled weddings yes. Sure, so this is specifically a prayer request for canceled weddings. Mm -hmm. There have been a number of canceled weddings, and that's, yeah, that's a question. We had to cancel a wedding uh, that we were going to be hosting in our, uh, uh, what's it called? The, the, clubhouse. the clubhouse in our in our neighborhood. So, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's a huge loss. It's a huge loss. Mm -hmm. a huge loss. Uh, why don't I pray for us? Mm -hmm. uh, Lord God, for the men and women uh, who are affected by uh, the cancellation of their marriages, uh, for the businesses that are affected uh, by this, um, but in general, and specifically in the wedding industry, Lord, we just pray uh, for your comfort, uh, for your peace, God. Um, we thank you that um, you love and value marriage, uh, that you've made us and built us into community, uh, God. So I just lift up uh, those um, potential bride and grooms uh, in their disappointment and uh, in their time of loss right now. I just ask you to comfort them in Jesus' name. Any, all right. I don't think any anything else. Okay. Well, listen. Um, Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We're so glad to have you here on our Wednesday Night Live online. We look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday, same time, 6.30. And then each day. Uh, we have our Word at 1. At uh, so please take a look. We've been getting a lot of good traction on that. We appreciate you guys looking at the videos. Yes. Uh, it gives you a chance to get looking to know to us our, a little bit. Real life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is unfiltered. It's us working out and with the kids, you know, no makeup. Well, well I, I never wear makeup. So. I, didn't have but people. I should I tell people that. I know, I'm sorry. But uh, we just want to be as real with you guys as we can. We love you. We miss you so much. Your church family misses you. We're praying for you. Um, and then please uh, uh, like, subscribe, uh, share our feeds. And we will see you Sunday morning, uh, bright and early at 10 a.m. Okay? Yeah, We're praying see you for tomorrow, you. See you Sunday. And the church is open. Uh, the phones are always available uh, 9 to 12, Monday through Friday, even during this time. So. If there's anything we can do to pray for you, don't hesitate to call, and uh, we'll be here for you. We love you. Blessings on you all. Take care.